are back on the show. This is Jitanji. If you're joining us, I'm very excited because uh, it's very difficult to find someone who's just like me, like me rather, but a male version. Okay, so my next guest, he is a host and producer as well, and he's doing amazing things. Let's get to know him, Charles Yao, here on Kababayan today. Yes, indeedy. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Charles. I've known you for uh, over a decade now. It, yes, and uh, let me tell this to the audience. Okay. You've gone through phases of pretty and fine. <laughs> like uh, from, from when I met you, you know, you were young and spry, and now you are... Fine wine, pretty. Oh, why, thank so, you, Charles. It's been a long it. time. Uh, long do time. Way too long. Way too long. But I'm glad we are able to reconnect, and there are amazing things that you're doing. Let's talk about them, thank right? You. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, isa kang Pilipino, lumaki ka saan? Uh, BF Homes, Paranaque. Paranaque din ako. I know. I just found that out <laughs> right this moment, so yeah. I'm so shocked about that. Okay, how was it like growing up in Paranaque? You know, um, there's a stereotype of the Philippines being jungle-like or very slow. Mm -hmm. The Philippines is like, um, well, Metro Manila, there's the busy grind, mm -hmm. and then there's the suburban bubble. Mm -hmm. BF Homes, you can wake up and feel the day. Yes. I love it. <gasps> okay, so let's talk about the decision to move here to America. Okay. When was that and how old were you? Circa 1989. Um, my parents would go here throughout the 80s, but the, the full decision when we said, you know what, we're, we're good, we're gonna move, is when we got approved. Mm -hmm. You know, the naturalization process right. was in 1988. Were you separated initially, or you all came together? Because as we know, a lot of families don't get to go together. Great question, absolutely. Um, I, I came th via the route of the wonder years where all the family waited together, we moved together. Oh, okay. So it wasn't much of a struggle, right. to be honest with you. It was an emotional struggle for my mom, because to leave that behind to, to leave the Philippines and you know socially the gap of money making in the Philippines is so wide even the poor has gaps even the middle class has gaps mm -hmm. and when you're comfortable it, it's hard to leave that until uh, uh, let's spell it out pag sure. meron kang katulong meron kang driver masarap yung buhay mo sa Pilipinas di ba right, right. maraming tumutulong Tapos you come here to America and you're working, grinding, right? right? And, and sociologically, this was since 1988. That, that's a little, two years past the Edsa Revolution. Mm -hmm. There was a big influx of Filipinos who moved there during the Edsa Revolution and post it. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like lapu lapu and she's like, nope, we're Filipinos. We're gonna eat dying and we're gonna stay <laughs> in BF homes and we're gonna eat garlic fried rice. Right. But when it came to an issue of education, that was probably the bulb-changing moment for my mom. Mm -hmm. um, what made it okay for my brother and I was, oh, once you're done with your education, you can go back to the Philippines. And did you go back to the Philippines after school here? Uh, I did for a short time. And you, you worked there as well? Right, I, I was uh, a voiceover talent for a prestigious uh, production house. Uh, Hit Productions. Mm -hmm. It was a big honor, major honor, and that has its own story. If time permits, we can go through that. But uh, I went back here because living in, in the U.S., I found to be more acclimated already. Okay, so ilan taon kang nandito? You, you moved at what age? Almost 14 years old. So at 14, you moved here, and then you tried to go back to the Philippines after school, but you realized na iba na yung sensibilities mo. Right. May pagkakanuna. Don't you agree that some Filipinos look at that as if yabang naman ito? Absolutely. Ironically, I call 89.9 .9 magic. Um, and I think one of the DJs there, Mo Twist, Mo Twister, was not, it was in a, in a radio hiatus. Mm -hmm. I open up, I call. Open up with tons of compliments, mm -hmm. right? I say, hey, you guys are carrying this radio show so well. You guys are nailing the topics. Mm -hmm. Self-effacing, you know, I called in as like, how do I blend in to meet girls here? Because mm. they think like the English speaking is strong, but right. I've lived there so much longer than I was raised in the Philippines. So, medyo malakas siguro yung impression. Not necessarily malakas strong malakas. Dating. Not necessarily good malakas, right. but just, it's just Para strong. Ma Tsunami. To. <laughs> Tsunami, right? You're, you're like, you're like a Pero that's the great thing is you are able to articulate that. And you know, Charles, you have a gift. You have the gift of gab. Not a lot of Filipinos can say that. Na, 
Mabilis ka, mabilis. So pagbalik natin dito sa Kababayan Today, we're going to see how he's been able to transition his career to make his gifts and talents his profession. We'll be right back.